Are you kidding me? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. This is Peter. Hey, guys. Peter, what in the world are you doing? Uh, today, we're going to be waterproofing, actually showing you guys how to waterproof your components like your ESC, your receiver, and your servos for your planes so you can fly in the wettest of conditions. Wow. So you want to just give a little, <laughs> little demo? See, I, I thought you were honestly damaging stuff to get rid of it. Are you kidding me? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what components did you use to do this? Mainly what I used for most of this stuff, like for the helicopter and the tank, was the Corrosion X. This is the standard normal edition of their stuff. We have the spray can version, and we also have the uh, spray bottle, which is good for dipping things. We also have some HD that I'm going to show you for servos and stuff. And we also have some conformal coating too, which is another option, and some epoxy for your ESCs. So you don't use one thing on all these, you actually use different things? Yeah, I use different components, because certain okay. things like the ESCs will catch on fire, even if you use Corrosion X. They, they become a little more resistant to the water, but if yeah. you keep shaking around there, they just blow up anyways. And, and the whole idea mm -hmm. of this is not to uh, to show you how to, to, to dunk things underwater and make mm -hmm. them work, just but to just flying. protect them. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, God forbid, you, you land in a lake, you get it out really quick, mm -hmm. most likely your electronics will be good. So is this is this salt water over here? Yeah, that's salt water too, so we're, we're going to try salt water as well. Are you kidding me? Yep. Salt water's bad. It's very bad. All right, now I saw you over here doing weird stuff. What, what, what are you going to show us first? Uh, why don't we do the receiver first? I'm going to grab the radio. We're going to bind it up to show you it works. So, Peter, where in the world do you learn how to waterproof electronics? Uh, from the internet. From the internet? Yep, internet and general dumb experience. I just I basically just see what other people are doing and then kind of copy them. That's cool. Now, you, you're also a big fan of boats, right? Mm hmm. Lots of boats. Do you do this? Fun. Do you do this as well with all your boats? Uh, yeah. The funny thing is, too, I did this one year for a boat. It went straight in the ocean. I took the boat out of the ocean and never washed it for another year. Came back to it, and it still worked just fine. The server, the receiver, really? everything. Really? You didn't yeah. rinse the, the salt water off? Didn't even rinse it off. I forgot to do it. Wow. Now, in the past, one thing that people used to say is, if God forbid your your plane went down, mm -hmm. you were able to disconnect the battery, rinse it off with distilled water, mm -hmm. you know, and let it air dry. Uh, but in this case, you actually had the salt water still mm -hmm. on it, and it didn't destroy your electronics. Yeah. So you see this receiver is just a normal receiver right now. It works on everything. I'm going to use the uh, spray version of this because I want to get in the cracks. You can either use the um, the standard edition too if you want to dunk it in there. Just this you, this will last you a lot longer than this because this gets kind of messy. But over time, we're just going to spray it in there and get going with so it. So you don't de decase it or anything? Uh, it's better to decase it, but I'm just going to be real quick and short. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. So basically just make a huge mess. This doesn't attack any electronics, it doesn't short out or anything, it has no nope. conductive properties. Uh, I think it still has some conductive properties, but it's very, very, very minimal. And for most electronics, it's perfectly safe. And now we should be able to throw this in the tank. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's not going in the fail safe. Did the you just throw the battery in there? <laughs> the battery. I'm going to show you to do the battery too. Did you do this battery, I hope? I haven't done the battery yet. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> you get to that. In the water. But you can see, motor still works. The signals are still coming through just fine. <laughs> this just feels so wrong, Peter. <laughs> I'm having fun here. How so are you, you doing the battery? Because that's, that. that's drawing an amperage. You have your hands in it. Mm -hmm. Don't do right. that at home. I, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if it's working right now. Don't do that at home. But I'm basically going to show you what you're going to do with the battery too. It exposed leads. It's uh, it's not that bad. The resistance of this water is not too terrible. It's your your distilled tap water. I don't know what the actual number of resistances, but you can see electroplating going on too. Watch. Look, look at the negative terminal. It will start bubbling in a second. Yeah. Electrolysis is going on right now. And you're not getting shocked. Yep, not getting shocked. So what I do is just take some corrosion Don't eggs. do this at home. Do this at home. Yep. This now, terminal. now these leads here, it'll still do the, the bubbly thing here, right? Yep, you can spray the corrosion X on there and it will stop that too. It'll break that layer so it won't be it won't be reacting with the water. So now it puts it back in the water and you won't see anything happen. Or in that. That's for if you really want to fly in the water. If you're in the water for a long amount of time and your battery's completely wet, you can cut the heat shrink off, spray the stuff on there, and then put the heat shrink back on. So we go to the servo now? Let's go to the servo. The servo is the trickiest one of them all. This you do have to decase. Yeah, then. you have to decase this. So we're gonna just take the normal screws. This is a brand new TG90, which is like two whole dollars. Isn't that expensive, Josh? Yes. We're saving hands are all Now, what main components are in the server? You got a potentiometer, right? Yep, the potentiometer and the um, server motor driver and um, whatever the other component's called. Okay. What do you have to make sure you protect the most? Uh, you have to protect the potentiometer because if you get salt water in there, it will give you false readings because basically a potentiometer is just a variable resistor. Okay. And water does have resistance too, so if you get in there, the server will just start freaking out. 
any of you guys have crashed in the water and seen your servos wet will know what exactly it looks like. It's like the twitch of death. Yep. It just either goes full one way and then breaks or does something else. So basically you can see the components there, the motor, the pentiometer, and the servo controller. I'm going to use the HD for this because we're going to go to seawater right after this. So what does the HD differ do different than the Corrosion X? Uh, HD is heavy duty. It's just a lot more dense. It smells like peanut butter too, which is kind of weird. It's also messy. It looks spray. like peanut butter. Yeah. It could be peanut butter. Not sure how peanut butter work for this. Poisonous? Should I taste it? You want to try? No. <laughs> now we so need you to just left it all too. just sloppy in there. You yeah. Didn't... I'm going to get around here too because that's where the potentiometer is. Oh my gosh, you know what? It smells like the aviation stuff they put in. Oh, this stuff is very widely used in the aviation world, yeah. yeah. I think it's even on the um, space shuttle and stuff like that. They use it in space. So basically, I'm just going to clean it off right now. And this stuff is very difficult to get off, so a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Something with alcohol is really good for, like, rum alcohol to clean it off. Otherwise, you won't be able to glue it on to anything. Yeah, right? otherwise you glue it and it'll fall off. Okay. All right, so Keep the is waterproof now. I'm going to go back for our receiver that's been... You just left it in there on yeah. purpose, didn't you? Yep, just make sure it's all wet. Alright, it's in the elevator slot. Yeah, the cleanest electronics ever. You know, I'll do the connectors too while we're at it. It's probably gonna be in fail safe. Mm -hmm. Nope, no, it isn't. <laughs> Let's get all the, get all the air yeah, bubbles air out of it. Out. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So would you recommend, honestly, like if, if you're flying and there's a lot of snow, mm -hmm. just do this as a preventative me measure? Yep. Hey, don't touch the throttle. <laughs> Alex is over here trying to sabotage <laughs> things. <laughs> That's just insane. <laughs> so everything still works? All right. All right, we'll leave that in there for even longer amounts of time. What are you gonna do next? Uh, we'll do the ESC. That is the last thing, and that is one thing Corrosion X does not really do a very good job with, or any uh, uh, coating for that matter. We've also done the conformal coating. This works pretty good for your receivers too, but for the ESCs, there's just something magical about them that doesn't really work. So should we show them what? Yeah. Should we show them what a normal ESC looks like when it's wet? Uh, yeah. Show me because I've never seen this happen. Hi, GoPro. All right. So you want to do me the honors? No. <laughs> no, I don't. All right. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna hold it right here. Yep. Yeah. Actually, hold that battery out of the water. We want this battery. Okay. So I'm gonna. Yep. Is this gonna kill me? Now nah, you'll be fine. You sure? You're just gonna die. Three, two, one. All right, take it out. Stops working completely. It might start smoking any second now. Oh great, what do I do when it starts smoking? Um, do I run out the door? Nah, you'll be fine. Is then this is unprotected one? This is unprotected, yeah. So it died that quickly. Yeah, there's there the smoke. There you go. All right, so that EC's done. That's pretty much what happens to them when they get wet. Well, now I can't send this to anyone as a Christmas present. Nope. Uh, luckily, that's an old, really, really old Heidi King speaker. Wow, I, I know that smell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, how are you going to fix this problem? Because you cannot mm -hmm. use, like you said, conformal coating and, and yeah, other things. Yeah, right? I've used conformal coating, but it oh, wow, stopped it working. But when as soon as I took out the water and dried it off, it worked just fine. But I'm pretty sure over periods of time, this will eventually just stop working completely. All right, All right here's an ESC too that's that has the um, corrosion X on it too. We can just show this one as well because we got this. You want to dump this one in the water? No. <laughs> motor two? Uh, motor two, you can do that. Ready? Yep. yep. Stopped. You can see that one stops too. But the nice thing is when you clean the corrosion X off or clean the water off, it still runs. Wow. So, so it's, a, it's a little bit of a barrier feature, but it will not run under water though. But this stuff is a lot, corrosion X is a, uh, it's a slimy green stuff. Yeah. Okay. But you, I'm using the HD for this. Okay. You can use the normal stuff too. It's just a little bit of so extra security. So it's protection, but if, if it shuts off, don't obviously keep trying to make it work. Dry it off. Good chances it'll be protected, mm -hmm. and you don't have to lose your investment. Yep. Cool. And luckily, these are cheap speed controllers. The higher quality ones, I've done Corrosion X, and even without Corrosion X, it still survived the ocean just fine. They just got really corroded, so I just put the stuff on there and brought it back to life. Nice. Okay. That's another thing too you can do. This DX8's been in the ocean. Hit with salt water completely. There's a little bit of stuff here but okay this it started freaking out the screen went nuts everyone thing went nuts and i took this stuff because i had it with me and sprayed it all over afterwards? on the insides afterwards yeah okay so and then i just kept flying i just kept flying for the rest of the day over the ocean that's amazing so what's the proper way if you want to try to make this as waterproof as possible mm -hmm. say you have a boat or some application yeah. a water plane yep we're gonna run into that right now how do you do it so basically what i did is i took the heat shrink off the esc mainly because uh, most companies want the heat shrink 
only get about to here. They don't go very far over. I want some extra area because we're going to epoxy this. Now this ultimately is still not the end all be all, right? You can't have this fully submerged for a very long time. Uh, we're gonna use five minutes of epoxy and apparently five minute epoxy is not waterproof. Over a period of time, according to the internet, okay. water will get to it and it will start to be permeated. But you can use 24 hour epoxies or something, something a lot longer. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go heat shrink that first. Notice when you're heat shrinking this, you're not just laying on it, you're fanning it, yep. going back and forth. That's yeah. just to keep the solder from getting hot, right? Uh, it's a little bit for the heat shrink too, because this thing just shrinks slowly, so I get a little time to conform to it. Okay. All right, so once you've done that. So you can't do hot glue, right? Uh, no hot glue, because the hot glue does not stick to silicone very well. If you if you try this with hot glue, the hot glue will let go of the silicone and water will seep in around the cracks and get everything wet. And then it stays in there. Yep, and then water stays in there and then you're pretty much done. All right, so we're gonna mix the epoxy up. So we got five minute epoxy. If you want to make a more waterproof DSC, not a water resistant one like we're gonna make right now, you want to use longer epoxies like five hour minimum, not not the five minutes or 30 minutes stuff. Would you recommend like brushing a coat on it and then heat shrinking it? Uh, I tried that once, but the uh, this stuff started running like mad. Okay. It was like really wet, so. I'm gonna do that afterwards. So what you're doing basically is you're just sealing it in there. You're mm -hmm. just kind of capping off that silicone area. Yep. Okay. So once we're done mixing our epoxy, make sure it's mixed very well, that there's like a bunch of little air bubbles in it. We're gonna go ahead and coat our ESC ends. And the reason we didn't coat the whole speed controller in epoxy is to not pre uh, create a barrier of heat. So right now the heat sink's still attached here and it can still get around the heat shrink. But we do lose some of the properties, or some of the cooling properties as we cannot get airflow in here anymore. Can't release that heat. Yep. But it's still coming through the heat shrink, through the heat sink, through the heat shrink. Okay, cool. So applications really for this is really if you're gonna be just building a flow plane. Yep, yeah, if you're definitely gonna be in water and waters in your future, you wanna do this. If you're just gonna be fine in the rain, Corrosion X works pretty good for the speed controllers. Cool. Ideally, this will be inside the plane anyway. Mm -hmm. I could see like a lot of uh, a lot of pusher style planes uh, modified at Easy Stars and stuff like that, mm -hmm. where the ESC is on the outside. This could be really good. Yeah, because now you can still run in the cool air. You just can't get the airflow inside underneath the shrink wrap. Now, can you do similar things like to uh, video transmitters for FPV? Because that's always external. Uh, yeah, actually, this would work on that too. Okay, good to know. Just don't put it over your dip switches. Yep, otherwise you'll never be able to toggle them. Oh, that's another thing too. If you want to change channels too, you probably won't be able to do it with this stuff because you'll have to pierce the shrink wrap to change the channels. If you're doing a video transmitter. Yep, but I think Corrosion X might work better on that. Cool. We could try it though. Good to know. So see you're wiggling around the wires, that's to kind of work it down in there? Yep, just make sure it's fully seated in there and it doesn't get anywhere inside the um, underneath the shrink wrap. Now we just let that dry for about five minutes or so. Whichever epoxy you're gonna use, you're gonna need to let it dry for the full cure time. In my experience with epoxy, mm -hmm. take what time it says and give it triple or quadruple mm -hmm. the amount of time before you ever even handle it. Uh, usually, a lot mm -hmm. of people with epoxies are saying that's the time you can handle it, mm -hmm. you know, but it's not when you get the maximum strength. Yeah. Usually it's about 24 hours for almost everything, right? Mm -hmm. okay. And actually, I made this one just today too. This was this is right before the shoot. I need to test something, so here's an actual epoxy one. This one's been sitting in the tank the whole time. Beautiful. And for the last bit of uh, this episode, we're gonna show you about the motors too. Your motors, your brushless motor will actually just run completely wet. It's perfectly yeah. sealed. The only thing that's not really sealed are the bearings and stuff. They're susceptible to the elements, so that's why I really like this stuff for. You just get the bearings. Is this just like too. WD on steroids? Uh, WD-40 on steroids, and this does not rust thing. WD-40 will rust stuff. Because it displaces everything, right? Yep, it's water dispersant 40 or whatever, yep, water whatever displacement 40 means. 40. Yeah. Yep. But that stuff will rust, and this stuff does not rust, so this is a lot better for anyone wanting to run your motors underwater. Okay, very cool. Now your bullets and stuff, you can hit those if you want, but yep. it's not really a big deal because they just pulses of energy, not mm. constant current, right? Yep, and, it, 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 and then you can just go ahead and coat them and it just keeps them from rusting and corroding. Very good, man. Actually, Very it's gold plated, so now, don't rust. Where do you get all these chemicals? The places near the ocean will probably have them. If not, you can just search them on the internet. I think we got ours from Amazon too. Amazon. If you guys have an application, I would say especially multi-rotors, things like that, that are gonna be out in the elements, say you're flying in the winter, you know, your multi-rotor runs out of batteries, it goes in the snow, that's a really good likelihood that you're gonna get damage from it because your motors are warm, everything's warm, it's mm -hmm. gonna melt that snow, it's gonna come in. This is a really good way to protect it. And Peter, I never knew any of this. Thank you so much for sharing oh, that no with problem. us. Uh, last thing I wanna to touch on too is the, uh, the conformal coating too. Okay. This does not work on your motors because uh, it will clog the bearings. You can do it on the receivers. Uh, that's pretty much the only thing I really recommend this stuff for because the ESCs, they didn't like it either when I tried it. Okay. 
And conformal coating is kind of like a spray enamel, right? Yep, spray enamel. The nice thing about conformal coating, they have removals for that where you can spray it on the board and you can take the take the conformal layer off and then you can resolder things and then put the layer back on. Oh, very nice. So it's actually, you can dissolve it. Yep, you can dissolve it and recoat it later. Awesome. So we're ready for the final dunking of everything? Go for it. No magical smoke. Oh man. I don't think smoke wins or works under wire though. You see the motor? That still works. Servo. That still works. Receiver's still on, so well technically it's that works. It's not even going into fail safe. Nope. We're getting pretty good penetration too, because 2.4 gigahertz does not work very well underwater. How deep do you think we can go underwater with 2.4? Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't imagine more than a couple inches after this. Really? This is about as far as we're gonna get. Hey, you know what? Can I do something? Yeah, sure. Ready? Yep. Still working? Still working. I think the signal's coming through the table though, because it's, it's going through the bottom now, because we're close to the bottom of the tank. Really? Yeah. Should we go to the seawater? The sea water's gonna be even worse. Uh, yeah, let's try it. All right. We got the salt water tank over there. We have our- Something's gonna smoke. So for the last test, we got some salt and now some this, water. This is already up to the concentration of, of normal seawater, right? Uh, I have no idea how to test it. I think it's- Yeah, we put a lot in there already though. Yeah, it's a lot. We're just gonna keep going. And the more salt you put in, the more uh, conductive it is, right? Yep. I think that's enough for now. I would say so. Should it's... we just put the components in there and see what happens? Yeah, go for it. Actually, yeah. Go to the servo first. Here. Quick the servo. Then we get some water. A little in servo? It. Yep. Uh oh. Just stop. Okay. No, no. Josh. <laughs> Here's the receiver. The receiver's gonna be fun. See if this thing still works in our water. That little bubble's ah, up. It's still working. It's screaming, it's saying, have mercy. The salt's not even dissolving. This is pretty warm water, so that's we're probably. Pretty, that's we're really pretty saturated, saturated yeah. Yeah. But here, I'll turn the motor on and see if we can. Right. Is it running backwards? Probably is. Oh, here's the battery too for giggles. Oh, the other thing the receiver's giving out. <laughs> the receiver or the servo? Probably the oh, the receiver's back on. The servo's back on, yeah. Just the receiver that was freaking out. Well, the receiver's freaking out? Yeah. I didn't even see it going to the fail safe. Yeah, watch the receiver. This stuff's so, oh, look at the connection of the battery. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so seawater is not the best for this kind of stuff, but you can save your parts because your parts are still good when you take them out. Yeah, look, look, look at the connectors. Oh my gosh. Like paralysis is going on in them. Actually, one way we can stop that is bring the can of HD. Okay. It's a mess. Friends, well, thank you for watching, Peter. Great job. Um, I'm going to probably go through because snowy season's coming and we have a lot of multi rotors, a lot of components. This is a really good, simple way for you to protect it. I had no clue this stuff even existed. So thanks for showing it. Uh, I, I learned from the forums, from the float, from the float guys, because a lot of people they've been flying with the water for forever now. And Corrosion X is like the number one thing there. So very cool. It's very number cool. one thing here too. We're gonna have links down below where we got this stuff. Also check out Amazon and check out other forums too. We get a lot of our knowledge from other people, as you got it from the mm -hmm. uh, the boat guys, right? Yep, the boat guys and the airplane guys, because uh, people like flying off the seawater too. A lot of people a lot smarter than us, so keep your eyes open for that. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next yep. time. So the is the episode H two over? H two over. Every time.